Okay, well, welcome back to our lecture on support vector machines. We're now into the second part of this lecture, and we've been talking about how we can transform things into a hyperplane as we have started to show a couple examples, um, which can be a little bit conceptually difficult to get our, our arms around. So we have an H plus, we have an H minus, and then we have this middle ground that we're thinking about, that we're trying to, to maximize, trying to have the largest margin. And in the last um, part of this lecture, I was just starting to go through this. And so here's an example of a large margin separation that we would like, but we can have situations where um, their margin is not as great. And so here we see an example of that. And what we'll be getting to later is we can actually have examples of some of these data that at least for some of them, they actually still don't honor this, um, the separation that we're trying to come up with. So we'll come back to that in a minute. So here is um, trying to have a geometric interpretation of the algebraic distance of points to a hyperplane for two dimension, two dimensional case. Um, I'm just going to skip over this relatively speaking. Um, I think that this is maybe conception of a little bit easier for us to get our arms around that we're trying to maximize that distance. But this is just a, for a simple um, two dimensional case, but we have multiple dimensions. It's going to get harder and harder for us to at least come up with a, an easy way to conceive what that means. So this is the supporting um, math for, for this figure where we talk about um, two hyperplanes, H1 and H2. And so we, the, the, the bottom line of this is we can go beyond one dimension, we can go into two or more dimensions and have this quote hyperplane type of concept to help us to figure out the, the separation, maximize that across the, the different data sets that we have. So we can be thinking for a linearly se separable training examples. We, we have this type of a, a data set um, with an input and a corresponding output up to from one to, to n. And the problem is we want to solve the following constrained minimization problem. We want to be minimizing this equation. And this is the formulation of the hard margin um, support vector machine. And so a hard margin support vector machines means that you have to keep out of this no man's land in the middle. Um, so that's an option. And perhaps the data will be inclined such we can use a hard margin um, support vector machine. Otherwise, we're going to have to be thinking about some other approach. Um, for a dual formation formulation of constrained optimization problem, um, this is something that you can be looking at in the, the textbook for, for more um, information. There is something called, I'm just going to call it the KKT, Optimization Solution Conditions, and they're, they're laid out here. And so after solving the, the dual problem numerically, the resulting optimization lambda i values are used to compute w and wo using the KKT conditions. And so um, this is where we're able to do a calculation. So this is another algorithm that's helping us to, to do the, the separation of um, features. And so we can make a criteria judgment of its, if it falls into one camp or another. So here is just some, some more developments of that. I'm just gonna go ahead and um, skip over this and not go over this in much detail. So W is computed using conditions, um, the, of the, the KKT conditions. Um, and we can be thinking about a very small percentage having um, lambda I is greater than zero. Um, and so, let me just go ahead and continue on. Um, I tried to give a high level um, thought about the support vector machine. This is getting into some of the details of the implementation. Um, so we had a hard decision boundary example, but now 
um, we're trying to offer up a soft margin classifier example where you can have these kind of data that fall in the middle that don't actually um, fit. You know, all of these squares should be over there, all the circles should be over here. And so we're allowed to have um, a relatively small number of examples that don't quite follow that. And here we're using some of this um, um, development that we had in these last couple of pages that I didn't go over in much detail to get the, the mathematics where we would actually start to code in these into some type of language, whether it be Python or doing something in um, MATLAB or, or something else. So this is some, some more of the supporting mathematics to allow the error in the da data. We relax the margin constraints by invoking slack variables. And so that's what this, um, this variable here, eta, that we're introducing as a possibility to allow us to do that. Um, so we penalize the errors by assigning the extra costs and change the, the object function as follows, where C is a penalty parameter, which is a trade-off parameter between the margin and mistakes. So um, it gets a little bit more complicated to allow for soft decision boundaries, but be, based on the data sets that we have, that may be something that we find is much better for, for us. So this all boils down to a optimization problem that we're, we're laying out here. And so this formulation is the soft margin um, support vector machine. So this is a tracticable form that we can code. And so thus we can have a hard margin um, support vector machine or a soft margin support vector machine, which is about the level of um, detail that I want to have us focus on for, for this part of the, the lecture. Using the KKT conditions, the dual formulation of the soft margin um, support vector machine is reduced to, to this. And so we can be using this kind of a formulation as, as well. Um, so lambda i can have values in the interval of um, zero less than or equal to lambda i less than or equal to z. So there's three cases. So first lambda i equals to zero. We don't contribute to the optimization value of w. If um, lambda i is greater than zero, but less than c, the corresponding pan patterns are on the, the margin. And case three, lambda i is equal to c. This co corresponding pattern is mis- classified or lies outside the, the margin. So we have these kind of cases that we need to be thinking through um, with, with this type of soft um, margin support vector machine. Okay, so um, now let's talk about nonlinear classifiers and maybe this picture will give you an idea of what that might look like. So for training examples which cannot be linearly separated, uh, we can look at the feature space that can be separated linearly with some type of transformation. One possible way of doing that is using something called a kernel. So by taking the data here, we're able to um, have the input space um, then um, changed over to a feature space. And now we're getting this, this margin here that we would like to have. And so this is a, a strategy that we can be using is using some form of a transformation. Okay, I'm gonna stop here and I'll continue on. I'll back up just a chart or two and we'll continue with nonlinear classifiers.